Do you hear that? Do you smell that? No, it's not what The Rock is cooking. It's a whole bunch of new fragrances. Yeah, we've got some new releases from Carolina Herrera, Paco Rabanne, Zadig and Voltaire, Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, Kenzo. A lot of little things coming out. And a bunch of these are limited or collector's editions. Oh boy, my favorite. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about these upcoming releases and decide which ones you should or maybe shouldn't be hyped for. So let's jump into it. So like I said, we've got uh, six different fragrances to talk about here, and some of them I think, uh, who gives a crap about? Let's check one of those out first. With Paco Rabanne, Phantom Legion. So uh, Phantom, of course, with its very unique robot bottle and uh, vanilla lavender style was not to everybody's liking. Some people really didn't enjoy that one so much. But now we have Phantom Legion, so it's, Let's check this out. Unleash your energy and creativity with the new Phantom Legion Collector's Edition. Rediscover the masculine eau de toilette by Paco Rabanne that you love so much in a collector's bottle. Dressed in a bold camouflage pattern, the iconic, iconic Phantom bottle is revealed in a new light. This connected and eco-responsible fragrance for men is truly unique in its bottle as well as its aromatic trail. Its notes of lemon, lavender, and vanilla will transport you to a bewitching universe. Let yourself be guided. So in case you didn't pick it up uh, from that, it's, it's, it's just a stupid bottle. It's the same fragrance. They gave it a new name, Phantom Legion, like we are Legion or something. I don't know. But uh, they just slapped a camo design on the robot bottle and they're looking to cash in. I mean, I get it, make your money, right? But seriously, <laughs> like Phantom has been out how long? And uh, everybody brainstormed together and they were like, what can we do to really push Phantom? You know, really boost the sales, get more people wearing it, more people liking it. Should we do a new flanker? Maybe reevaluate what we're doing with this? No, no, let's just actually, let's just slap some camo on that robot, man. And then say it's a limited edition. Sick. Good job, Paco Rabanne. Crushing it, nailing it. So Paco Rabanne, Phantom Legion, if you like collector's edition bottles, hardcore, um, you can buy it. Next up, let's talk about a limited edition fragrance, a little bit different from a collector's edition. This one is from Carolina Herrera. It's 212 VIP Black Smiley, which actually when I saw the, the bottle, it didn't make me think of a Smiley immediately. It made me think of Assassination Classroom. Not many of you out there are gonna get that, but for those of you that do, I applaud you. 212 VIP Black Smiley by Carolina Herrera is a new aromatic fragrance for men launched in 2022 under the VIP Collection in Limited Edition. Find your happy place with 212 VIP Black Smiley, a limited edition fragrance that celebrates the original Smiley brand. This feel-good fragrance celebrates the Smiley icon, a global symbol of positivity and happiness that is perfectly aligned with Carolina Herrera's philosophy of that's not English. <laughs> Let me, uh, Alegria de Vivir, which I'm assuming is Spanish. Uh, the joy of living is the translation. I took French in high school and I wasn't even good at that. I mean, was, sorry. This playful twist on the original 212 VIP black fragrance instantly sparks joy with its explosive scent and fun bottle dressed up in the original Spiley logo. This version has a top of blood orange ginger and orange flower, a mid of pepper, sesame, and lavender, and a base of vanilla, sugared almond, and a skin accord, a sexy skin accord. Now that being said, uh, depending on which website you look, the notes could differ. Uh, for example, on Parfumo, there is no almond, there is no sexy skin accord, just vanilla. But that's the information that I have as of right now, and I'm looking forward to it actually more than just about everything else in this video. Not everything, there's something I'm looking forward to more than that, but still, it's a surprisingly solid line. I'm talking about the 212 VIP line. There's a lot of fragrances there that are very good, worthwhile checking out. We're gonna get to the genre Paul Gaultier very soon, but next I want to quickly bang out just another 
a limited collector, blah, 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 blah fragrance. So it's Kenzo Ohm Eau de Toilette, and this is a new collector fragrance for men coming out in 2022. Kenzo celebrates its iconic Kenzo Ohm Eau de Toilette with a new design. The freshness of the sea combines with the green and woody scent of pine and sandalwood, evocative of a walk by the sea along a tree-lined avenue. An invigorating fragrance that caresses and refreshes the skin like a breath of salt. Yeah, salt. And nothing caresses me like a breath of salt. <laughs> the cap design has been uh, designed to save 34% plastic. The bottle is surrounded by untreated craft paper and a paper box produced from eco-sustainable sources, certified and printed with bio-based inks. So yeah, this one with top notes of sea notes, calypsone and nutmeg and made of pine and patchouli base of cedar and sandalwood. The way that it reads is that it's just a repackaging of the existing Kenzo Ohm. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, is I can't 100% for sure say that's what this is. I mean, it's possible that it's been tweaked and changed and not just popped into a new bottle exactly as it was. And I say that because the note breakdown, of course, vastly different, mainly in that the old note breakdown was a more traditional old style note breakdown where they gave you just crap tons of notes, you know, 10 in the top and 10 in the mid, whatever but there's a lot of notes. Whereas with this uh, limited collector's edition bottle, they give you three in the top, two in the mid, two in the base. So I can't for sure say that it's the exact same or maybe it's maybe it's tweaked a little bit. Okay, let's get to the big meat and potatoes of this episode of This Week in Fragrance, the new Jean Paul Gaultier Le Beau Le Parfum, which is the fragrance I'm looking forward to the most. This one obviously coming out in 2022 and it is a flanker to Le Beau. Le Beau Le Parfum is a devilish reinterpretation brimming with beauty and manly mischief, because that's what people all about. Yeah, man, I'm into mischief a little bit, as long as it's manly, you know what I'm saying? I'm not in any childish mischief, that's lame. The irresistible seducer, Le Beau Le Parfum enters the fray. This is like Mortal Kombat or something. But this time, he offers an even more intense version. It comes in a beautiful bottle that evokes a work of art, the mythical Le Beau torso with Renaissance touches in dark blue glass that reveals the juice it contains. Now this one has a top of ginger and pineapple, mid of cypress, iris, and coconut, and a base of tonka, ambergris, patchouli, and sandalwood. Now Le Beau was a little bit, maybe love it or hate it for some people because of that coconut that they put in there, but for the most part, got a really good reception from people. Now looking at this one, I'm even more intrigued. First off, of course, they're giving us more information on the note breakdown here than they did with the original. You've also got that iris, which immediately jumps out to me because I'm a huge fan of iris in just about every way that it's used. And with this being a Le Parfum and having Tonka in here, along with that iris and ambergris, patchouli, sandalwood, it leads me to believe that the iris is going to be that creamier, denser, sweeter take on iris, which sounds, ah. Uh, Friggin' awesome. And then in the opening, of course, ginger and pineapple, that stands out. The original, I think, had bergamot in the opening or in the top. So ginger and pineapple gives you a different, slightly more exotic take on a fresh fruity opening. And I'm really intrigued to see how that leads into the iris, the coconut. Again, that kind of exotic tie that they have with this fragrance line, uh, well, that they're building out in Lippo. And then uh, those denser notes in the base. So of everything I talk about here today, Lippo Le Parfum is what I want the most and it ain't close. All right, friendos, let's go on to a D squared fragrance. This one's called Original Wood. Gotta love that D squared stays committed to the wood. They love the wood. Everything that they do is based around it. And yet nothing seems to really take off all that much. And uh, it's, it's, it's like chaos theory or something. And they need to talk to Dr. Ian Malcolm about why this doesn't make sense what they're doing. But you know what, heck with it. Here comes some more wood your way. Original Wood is a new woody fragrance for men launched in 2022. A modern and sensual and sophisticated perfume for confident and passionate men. Original Wood is inspired by wood and its character. Powerful and reliable with complex, unique structure. Who would have thought of that? 
you know <laughs> original wood what's the inspiration behind it well you know uh wood and the weird thing about it is they had um the he wood and the she wood lines and they had multiple flankers and apparently that just didn't work out so well so they discontinued all of them just killed off their entire line everything and then with their reawakening more wood so original wood has top notes of violet leaf aquatics and cardamom mid of vetiver fir and cedar and a base of amber patchouli and musk and one question that i would have here is is original wood just kind of a rebottling in a sense of their original he wood the perfumer is the same for both the perfumer for the new fragrance is the same as the perfumer for he wood the note breakdown is pretty similar not exactly the same but it's pretty close close enough that if it was the same fragrance it wouldn't really surprise me at all so with the name being original wood and then having that same perfumer and then a very similar note breakdown it, it just makes me wonder if that's what this is is them either slightly tweaking the original and then re-releasing it or if it's just a complete re-release or if in fact it's not super close to he would but if i'm honest with you guys i'm leaning more toward it being some version some form of the discontinued he would last but not least from zadig and voltaire this is us low for all which every time i say this is us to my wife she just goes oh you mean like the uh, TV show? Mm. No, it's actually a fragrance. This is a new fragrance for men and women launched in 2022 in a limited edition. Did you look at that? With Low For All, Zadig and Voltaire presents a refreshingly sparkling fragrance for him and her. Sparkling citrus notes kick off with a hint of bergamot essence to give you an energized feeling while the heart offers an airy neroli infused with vibrant lavender essence. The base convinces with a seductive cashmere aroma that is absolutely addictive in combination with creamy sandalwood and sensual musk. So yeah, that's the note breakdown. Top of Bergamot, mid Neroli Lavender, base cashmere sandalwood, musk. Zadig and Voltaire has just been pumping fragrances out lately. They're just pumping it. You know, they're really trying to capitalize, I guess, on the successes that they might've had with their earlier releases. And they're putting out more and more and more and more, which is cool with me. I mean, they're kind of building out their portfolio, getting stuff out there. And in general, the quality of their fragrances is quite good. So if you can find them at a discount, for a decent price, typically they're a great pickup. Obviously, this one sounds like it's going to be more of a spring summertime type scent. Easy to wear, easy breezy. And if I can pick it up for $35, $40, I'll be all over that. And that's Zadig and Voltaire, yet another limited edition, going to wrap up this week in fragrance. So guys, let me know out of all these what you're looking forward to the most. I'm assuming most of you are going to say Phantom Legion because who can resist a robot with camo? Robocop should have had camouflage. Then nobody would have been able to see him. He would have just been like a silent ninja with a very powerful handgun. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for hanging in with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.